him into poison his heart, letting bitterness take root? Many a man might respond that way in such a situation, but not Samuel. He anointed Saul and acknowledged that the man was Jehovah's own choice. He kissed Saul, a sign of welcome and submission to the new king. And he said to the people, Have you seen the one whom Jehovah has chosen, that there is none like him among all the people? 1 Samuel 10, 1 and 24 Samuel focused not on faults, but on the good in the man Jehovah had chosen. As to himself, he focused on his own record of integrity to God, rather than on the approval of fickle people. He also worked faithfully at his own assignment, counseling God's people about the spiritual dangers they faced and encouraging them to remain faithful to Jehovah. His counsel reached their hearts, and the people begged Samuel to pray in their behalf. He gave them this beautiful reply, It is unthinkable on my part to sin against Jehovah by ceasing to pray in your behalf, and I must instruct you in the good and right way. 1 Samuel 12, 21-24 Have you ever felt disappointed when someone else was chosen for a certain position or privilege? Samuel's example is a powerful reminder that we must never let jealousy or bitterness take root in our heart. God has plenty of rewarding, fulfilling work for each of His faithful servants. For how long will you be mourning for Saul? Samuel was right to see good in Saul. This was a remarkable man. Tall and impressive in appearance, he was courageous and resourceful, yet initially modest and unassuming. In addition to such gifts, he had a precious one, free will, the ability to choose his life course and make his own decisions. Did he use that gift well? Sadly, when a man basks in the warm glow of newly acquired power, Modesty is often the first quality to melt away. Before long, Saul began to turn arrogant. He chose to disobey Jehovah's orders that Samuel transmitted to him. Once, Saul grew impatient and offered up a sacrifice that only Samuel could rightfully offer. Samuel had to give him strong correction and foretold that the kingship would not remain in Saul's family. Instead of being chastened by the discipline, Saul went on to commit worse acts of disobedience. Through Samuel, Jehovah told Saul to wage war against the Amalekites. Jehovah's instructions included an order to execute their wicked king, Agag. However, Saul spared Agag as well as the best of the spoil that was to be destroyed. When Samuel came to correct him, Saul revealed how much he had changed. Instead of modestly accepting correction, he rationalized, excused himself, justified his actions, sidestepped the issue, and tried to shift the blame to the people. When Saul tried to deflect the discipline by claiming that some of the spoil was intended for a sacrifice to Jehovah, Samuel uttered the famous words, Look, to obey is better than a sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15, 1-33 Courageously, Samuel rebuked the man and revealed Jehovah's decision. The kingship would be ripped away from Saul and given to another, a better man. Samuel was deeply upset over Saul's failings. He spent the night crying out to Jehovah about the matter. He even went into mourning for the man. Samuel had seen so much potential in Saul, so much good, and now his hopes were shattered. The man he once knew had changed. He had lost his best qualities and turned against Jehovah. Samuel refused to see Saul ever again. In time, though, Jehovah offered Samuel this gentle reproof. For how long will you be mourning for Saul, while I, on the other hand, have rejected him from ruling as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I shall send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, because I have provided among his sons a king for myself. 1 Samuel 16.1 Jehovah's purpose does not depend on the wavering loyalties of imperfect humans. If one man turns unfaithful, Jehovah will find another to carry out his will. So age Samuel let go of his grief over Saul. At Jehovah's direction, 
Samuel went to the home of Jesse in Bethlehem, where he met a number of impressive-looking sons. Yet from the first, Jehovah reminded Samuel, Do not look at his appearance and at the height of his stature, for not the way man sees is the way God sees. Because mere man sees what appears to the eyes, but as for Jehovah, he sees what the heart is. 1 Samuel 16.7 Finally, Samuel met the youngest son, and here was Jehovah's choice, David. In his final years, Samuel got to see ever more clearly the rightness of Jehovah's decision to replace Saul with David. Saul descended into murderous jealousy and apostasy. David, however, showed beautiful qualities, courage, integrity, faith, and loyalty. As Samuel's life drew to a close, his faith grew ever stronger. He saw that no disappointment is too great for Jehovah to heal, to resolve, or even to turn into a blessing. Finally, Samuel died, leaving behind the record of a remarkable life that spanned the better part of a century. All Israel mourned the loss of that faithful man, and no wonder. To this day, servants of Jehovah do well to ask, Will I imitate the faith of Samuel? End of article.